Good evening. Isaiah chapter 52 verse 13. Behold my servant. This would be Jesus Christ. Shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted. Extolled. And be very high. He should be, and he will be, by God, in the millennium, and in the eternal life. Not in the world today. Not in the world today. As many were astounded at thee, his visage, the visit, the, the visit of God, Jesus, was so marred, more than any man. And his form more than the sons of men. Jesus Christ, we're going to see in Isaiah 53, was beaten, bruised, battered, beyond recognition. You can't draw a picture. You can't make a movie of the true identity of the brutality that God put upon Jesus for man's sin. You can't do it. And not for a movie recently made that every day they had a shooting of that movie Gibson called in a Catholic priest and they had a mass and Bible believing Christians said oh go watch that movie that movie ain't about Jesus I've been told it's about Mary you can't see in the movies and in Hollywood what we're going to read in the Bible today Blasphemy for a Christian. Oh, go watch this movie about Jesus. The greatest story ever told. Moses. And no, that, no, just throw the Hollywood in the garbage. Open and read your Bible. It's amazing for a pastor to say, Oh, did you see this movie about? How about open your Bible and read it? His form of bitches, then more than sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many. Nations. Why not all nations? Because it's a heresy to say every place is going to be saved. When the Bible says, "Broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many that go therein, and straight is the gate that leads to life, and the few that go in." Listen, listen, listen. If you think everybody's going to go to heaven, you have not been involved in a public ministry, and today proved it for us at the farmers market, the Haver Family Ministry. The king shall shut their mouths at him. That's a second advent passage. Pilate didn't shut his mouth. Herod didn't shut his mouth. For that which had not been told them shall they see. And that they which had not heard shall consider. At the end of the tribulation, there are a group of people who will be called the sheep nation, and they don't even know that they're going in the millennium. They don't even know about Jesus Christ, and yet they help the Jews. In Revelation 19, when Jesus mounts on that horse, the Bible says no man knew his name. So let's move on. Now, Isaiah 53, let me switch. Isaiah 53, if you talk to a Jewish person, and I have, if you witness to a Jewish person, and I have, and you quote Isaiah 53, you know what that Jewish person is going to tell them, tell you? That Isaiah 53 is the nation of Israel. And the ones that persecute the nation of Israel is the Gentiles. And I'm here to tell you Isaiah 53 is about two. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's about God the Father. And it's about God the Father laid upon Every sin, the wrath of God, the judgment of God upon sin, upon the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who has believed our report? <laughs> Any public witness or whatever public ministry you have, you know there are people who don't believe. And that was shown today. And you'll know that there are people who do believe, people who do appreciate. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? 
Listen, when you go in the world and preach the gospel, you are revealing God's arm, the right hand of God about Jesus Christ. Come to church. We got a church movie. We got a church fellowship. We got church bowling. That's not revealing God, Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus said, preach the gospel. For he, Jesus Christ, knows who's the arm of the Lord. Then he goes, he. He is the arm of the Lord. And when you read the Jewish history, which we've been reading, that arm of the Lord that, that saved Israel out of Egypt is the Lord Jesus Christ. He shall grow up as a tender plant. You know, Jesus Christ wasn't a villain. He wasn't a military leader. He was a tiny plant, tender. As a root out of the dry ground. That's a miracle because dry ground doesn't prove produce plant. The earth is dry compared to God. He has no form or comeliness. In other words, if they would have had magazines and pictures back then, they did. Jesus' picture would not have been on a Jewish man's wall. And I'm talking about the ones that loved and appreciate Jesus. I'm not talking about the ones that hated him. There would be, no, when Jesus is walking through Israel, it'll be, oh, look, look at Jesus. Like you would see Hollywood. And Hollywood produces a Gentile Jesus, not a Jewish Jesus. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we shall desire him. Now that's talking about when the Jewish, we're talking about it in Israel, we're talking about the Jews in Isaiah, not the church age, not Gentiles. When the Jews see Jesus, there's no beauty. He was a rugged, tough, short, Jewish, brown-skinned man. Maybe the nose. You know, listen, I know that Jesus was rugged. That man walked up and down mountains all his life. That man walked wherever he went. You don't go walking around mountains, all that skinny, you know, little wimpy kind of Jesus. He wasn't that at all. But then again, there was no beauty for the lost man to see. Now, he's beautiful to me. The king in his beauty. He's despised. We saw that today. But Jesus Christ was despised by me before I was saved. And you got to admit, before your salvation, you despised Jesus. And rejected of men. Again, we saw that today. You see, in any public ministry. I've had a group of men in the prison ministry just get up in the middle of the Bible uh, 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 teaching. Just get, uh, just walk out rudely. I've had people take gospel tracts and rip them up in front of my face and throw them at me. I've had people take the gospel tracts and throw them in the garbage. I've had people yell at me and, 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 and cuss me out. I've had family members. Oh, no, no, no. You're a kook. A man of sorrows. Jesus wept. Jesus wept over Jerusalem. And John said there are things of Jesus' life that are not recorded. I guarantee there's many times when he went off to the mountain and prayed. I guarantee he was in tears. Drops of like blood in the Garden of Gethsemane. Acquainted with grief. He didn't have no happy life. What would Jesus do? He was a man despised, rejected. He was sorrowful in his grief. He wouldn't be appreciated by today's lad to see in church age. Life. He wouldn't be walking around with a birthday hat, Easter basket, and ho, 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 ho. And we hid as it were our faces from him. That's the apostles, the disciples. We'll see that again coming up. There are people when you bring the Bible. I remember one time we were going door knocking. I remember we walked up to the to the to the house, the front door, and we could hear the people scattering. And my son turned to me, he goes, What's that about? They see us carrying the Bible, and we they know why we're coming to the house. He was despised, and we esteemed it. We didn't care. They don't care. The world don't care. Don't tell me all the world loves Jesus. 
I'll tell you, if you say, if you believe that, you have never, ever witnessed for Jesus. Surely he, again, that he's all about Jesus, has borne our grief. Why? Because he is associated with grief. God, Job said, do you have eyes like I have? Do you have a life like I have? And God can say, nope, I don't, but I will. And you can look at God through Jesus Christ and you can say, you know what? He cried just like I cried. He suffered just like I suffered. He was rejected by, like, like I'm being rejected. All points tempted, but yet without sin. And carried our sorrows. He was sorry and our sorrows. And yet we did extreme him stricken. We seen him beaten. Smitten of God and afflicted. The witness of that afternoon that when Jesus was on that cross was a bleeding, pussy mess of a of a, a God in the flesh. You couldn't even recognize that, that body. And that body, the Bible says, was naked before all the world to see. And to the believer, he was witted, he, he was smitten by God. And to the world, well, did Romans do it? Did, did the Jewish people do it? And it's a great debate among churches. Who killed Jesus? Well, the Gospels tell us, Exodus chapter 12 tells us who killed Jesus. The Jews. It had to be the Jews. The Passover lamb. Well, no one killed him. He took his life. Yeah, he took his life, but they ordered it. But he was wounded from head to toe for our, not his transgressions, our transgressions, he was wounded. I wounded Jesus Christ. The man that cussed us out today, Jesus was wounded for his transgressions. The person that waved to us and said, how you doing? Jesus was wounded for their transgressions. The guy that walked by filming me. His transgressions wounded Jesus. All the world's transgressions, plural. Isn't it amazing? That's plural. Iniquities is plural, if you look at that. Yet the Bible says the Lamb of God would take away the sin, singular, of the world. Why is it iniquities and transgressions here, plural, and sin, in John chapter 1, because when Jesus died on that cross, he took everything and put it all one big lump on his body and on his blood. He was bruised for our iniquity. Beating. Punch. Beard pulled. His back ripped open. The chastisement, if you can look over here on the video, Webster's 1828 Dictionary, we never do the Hebrew and Greek unless it's absolutely necessary. We'd rather do the English because we all speak English. We press one for English, but we want to be smart and show our congregation how, how wonderful our big head is. We do the Hebrew and the Greek. It's a correction. It's a punishment. It's pain inflicted for punishment and correction, either by stripes or otherwise. See that pain? The chastisement? The Bible says he was without sin. The Bible says that Pilate said three times, I, know, I find no fault in him. Herod said, I find no fault in him. Judas said, I have betrayed the innocent blood. And yet for our transgressions and for our iniquity and the chastisement of our peace, you get peace through the gospel, love, joy, peace. The chastisement, the correction, the punishment, the pain afflicted for us to get the peace of the fruit of the Spirit was upon Jesus Christ. I can just imagine that, that uh, at the Sanhedrin uh, judgment hall where Jesus is and the Roman soldiers, I, I can see God say, punch him again for that sin. Go ahead and take that cat of nine tail and whip his back for the sin. More, more, more. 
Because I am angry with sin. Get him again. We'll see that in a moment, Isaiah 53. And, we, and the Christian comes up with, oh, God hates the sin and loves the sinner. And what on earth did God do to the body of Jesus Christ? Our transgressions, our iniquities. Verse 5, with his stripes, cat and nine tails, we are healed. You know what the greatest healing that ever happened? The blind man saw. Nope. The deaf man's ears opened up. Nope. That one leper that came back, thank you, I'm clean. Nope. You mean the people that, that were possessed with the devils? Uh, uh, no. For me, the greatest healing I had was on April 25th, 1987, on the Saturday <laughs> afternoon, when God took my sins, God took my transgressions, God took my iniquity, God took my chastisement, and God healed me of my sins upon Jesus Christ when I believed. I was healed, and I was washed. And I was forgiven of all my sins. There's that healing. All we are like sheep have gone astray. And this is quoted in the Gospels about the disciples. But even I have gone astray. Even I have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the disciples, you know, there's only one disciple at the cross of Jesus. You didn't get first. You didn't get saved the first time you heard. You turned away. You went elsewhere. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. God couldn't save me. No, God can save all. All. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He was oppressed, Jesus. And he was afflicted, Jesus. Yet he opened on his mouth. There's times that at the judgment of Pilate, there's times of Herod, Jesus. And you know what the sinner would say? I want the ACLU. I want the lawyers. I need a lawyer. I want a phone call. I've got rights. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And that's where he did the slaughter. As a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. Pilate said, what is truth? And then he goes, where are, you, where are you from? Jesus didn't answer him a word. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? Me! They told him the beach at the farmer's market, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Jesus saves. The Pope is no hope. Jesus saves. The church can't save you. Only Jesus saves. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in should not perish. I will tell the world about Jesus. A man today Cussing us out. What do you know? That's the wrong question to ask a street preacher. For 40 minutes I told him what I know. For he was cut off out of the land of the living. What's that mean? He died. Cut off. That cut off. Went to hell. They took his life. He was living, there's a whole bunch of living people around him, and he died. For the transgressions of my people, Jewish people, and that can also be saved, you know, for those that get saved, was he stricken, beaten? The, the, the crown of thorns beaten upon his head. The cat of nine tails, the fist. He made his grave with the wicked, two dying thieves. With the rich, his death. Joseph R. Mears was a rich man. He gave Jesus his tomb. Because he was because he had done no violence. No, I find no fault in him. 
neither was any deceit found in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Come on, hit him one more time. You didn't hit him enough for adultery. You didn't beat him enough for lying. Spit upon him for not obeying your parents. Give him the wrath of God. Take it out on him. Put that, that veil over his head and punch his face. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Listen, and Jesus is in the garden. He's not praying for God to pass over death. He's praying, Lord, sins. Father, you don't understand how wicked and vile the sins are. And when I go to that cross, on the way to the cross, from the judgment hall to the cross, I know you're going to beat the heavenly crap out of me. People don't like that expression. You're going to beat the hell out of me. For a man is transgression that he might not go to hell if he puts his faith and belief upon what I do. God sits up in heaven. They're punching Jesus. They're whipping Jesus. They're nailing him to the cross. They're, they're pounding upon his head, the throne. And God's up there. I like that. Yes. I'm satisfied. Sin is getting a beating. I like that. He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see light, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. God hates the sin and loves the sinner. Listen, you reject Jesus Christ, it's going to please God to put you in hell because it pleased God for Jesus to take the punishment and the bruise of sins. And if you don't want to believe that, well, you got to pay for your own sin, brother. And if you pay for your sin or Jesus pay for your sin, the, the, the chastisement and the hell and the torments, you don't need to do that. But if, if you want to do it yourself, that pleases God. But it already pleased God when Jesus... It pleased the Lord to bruise him. Get those words. He has put on him, Jesus, to grief. Listen, we come up over here in the beginning it says, uh, verse 3, He's despised, rejected the man of man's sorrows, and acquainted with grief. Verse 4, Surely he has borne our griefs. God said, it pleased the Lord, Jehovah, to bruise him. He had put him to, added more grief upon his grief, added more grief of our grief upon Jesus. From the time he stood before the high priest and his soldiers, all the way to the cross, and even when Jesus went to hell, and some people don't even believe that. In other words, when, when Jesus Christ suffered for our sins, God churned it up. And God let Jesus have it all. Drink that cup, son. All of it, son. Because one day I want to say the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. And I don't want anybody to walk up to me and say, that sin, Jesus, didn't die. Son, drink it all. And while you drink it all, Jewish guard, punch him some more. Roman guard, that, that, that those thorns are not deep enough in his skull. More. Upon the cross, Jesus said, I thirst. Don't give him, give him vinegar. You imagine that? God said, I thirst. Give him vinegar. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Now look at verse 6 real quick. At the end of verse 6. The Lord has laid on him, not in him. 
the iniquity. Listen, sin was not in Jesus, but it was laid upon Jesus. And verse 10, make his soul an offering for sin. The very ascensions of the eternal life. That's the soul, eternal life. That is the lamb. Offering for sin. That's the lamb of God right there. For sin, singular. Iniquities, plural. Transgressions, plural. But there it is. Offering the sin, sin, singular. The Bible says, for the Lamb of God which take away the sin. There's the Lamb of God right there, verse 10. He shall see his seed. Who's that? That's every believer in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures, Isaiah 53, and other places in the Bible. And he was buried. We just read about that. And he arose again the third day according to scriptures. And those that believe have been put into God or have been adopted by the Holy Spirit be called the sons of God. There it is right there. You see his seed, verse 10? There's the church age. There's all the Old Testament saints that died under the blood of animals. Though the blood of bulls and goats can't save you, the blood of that sin offering saved them, the Lamb of God. There's the future people who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ right there. Those are the ones that come out of the tribulation and wash their robes in the blood. There it is. That's the promise of the adoption. He shall pro prolong his days. <laughs> Forever. And the pleasure of the Lord, it pleased the Lord to bruise him, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Since it pleased the Lord to, to, to chastise and beat and, and put all the punishment, all the judgment up, upon Jesus Christ. And when Jesus Christ came out of that grave and sat on the right hand of the Father, now there's pleasure in heaven of the finished work of Jesus who holds the, the keys of death and hell. And, and what's one of them pleasures in heaven? He hit the ball and went out the outfield. And he, he did what? What's a ball? Oh, yeah, there's a place in the Bible. It's a ball, a big ball in the, in the wilderness. Oh, he made a left-hand turn. He made a left-hand turn. He made a left-hand turn. He did what? What's a race? We don't have races up here in heaven. What's that? What? Stop. All the angels hush. Stop. There's someone down there right now bowing a knee and asking Jesus to, to save them. Get the Lamb's Book of Life, write that name, name in the book, and the angels look over. Hallelujah! The blood of Jesus saved another, Luke chapter 15. You see, the angels don't rejoice. Oh, we got 25 people at the fellowship. The angels don't rejoice. Oh, look, they showed up for church Sunday morning. The angels don't rejoice over that. The angels don't rejoice over your wonderful, great message you preached. The angels don't rejoice when you say a prayer. The angels rejoice in heaven when that heart bows down and says, Jesus... I can't believe what you've done for me. I, I, I'm so worthless and vile. I don't even have the authority to come to you and ask you to save me. But the Bible said, if I believe, I believe that you'll save my soul. And that name's getting written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And the angels are rejoicing in glory. So mother's walking by. A saint of a mother's walking by. What's the hallelujah? There's a new name being written in glory. She looks over the page. She sees her son's name written down. Amen. My son got saved. Imagine what it'd be like in heaven when they see. Oh, he's saying a prayer. 
and, and you know the heavenly crickets. The angels ain't rejoicing at a, at a prayer being said. That man walks away. Hey, I'm going to heaven. I said a prayer. And all the, oh, no, you're not. Oh, no, you're not. The angels didn't rejoice. Your name wasn't written down in Lamb's Book of Life. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. It pleases the Lord to beat Jesus for sin and for man, and it's pleasure to the Lord that a man believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Rightfully and truthfully, and I gotta say that in the church age today. You know, there, there there are people and there are churches that someone got saved, and, and it's sorry that my heart has to say, real. There, did they really get saved? Now, I don't know, but did they? Or was it just to say a prayer and somebody head counted them? I'm amazed on how many churches they get up. This person received Christ. The Bible says that mouth is con to confess. I got saved April 25th, 1987. April 26th, I showed up to church Sunday morning. I raised my hand before the service began. The pastor called upon me. He said, well, what is it, Stiley? I said, I received Jesus Christ as my Savior yesterday. And I went home after the church service, and I told my father about heaven and about hell and about Jesus. With the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confessions made unto salvation, not the mouth of the preacher, not the mouth of the deacon, the mouth of the man that just got saved. They can't save it. They can't pronounce it. They can't proclaim it. Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10. I don't have the right to judge salvation, but I had somebody today telling me I was preaching, you know, you're going to have faith and works. I have got faith, and my works is I'm preaching the gospel. Romans 10, 9 and 10. Your faith and your works is, I'm offended. I don't like you preaching about Jesus. You need to check your salvation. You need to check your spiritual condition. You need to get right with God. He shall see the travail of his soul. Christ's eternal soul suffered. That soul went into hell and deposited our sins. Where does your soul go when you die? It goes to heaven or hell. Jesus' soul went into hell while his body laid on in that, in that tomb. He shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant, that's Jesus, not us, justify. Now, what's that next word? You know what the world wants to say? By his knowledge, my righteous servant justify all people go to heaven. That's what the world wants to say. But that's not what the verse said. Justified men. Why does it say many? Because not all will believe on Jesus Christ. And if you're foolish enough to think that everybody's going to get saved, well, I'm telling you, that filthy mouth gentleman today will not appreciate heaven because that language and that attitude toward Jesus is not going to be allowed. I wouldn't buy that man. I wouldn't give that man any business. I wouldn't trust his business business with that filthy mouth and I will never and I have not ever bought anything from him now if he becomes saved gets right with God okay for he shall bear their iniquities so we have first John 1 9 written because of Isaiah 53 if we confess our sin he is faithful and just to cleanse us from uh, to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness how by that faithful servant of Isaiah 53 you can't say it's water. You can't say it's works. You can't say going to church. Where's going to church in Isaiah 53? That dying thief didn't go to church. That dying thief didn't give money. That dying thief didn't give his tithe. That dying thief wasn't baptized. Yet Jesus said, today thou shalt be within paradise. 
Jesus Christ knew on the cross, it ain't finished yet. He says, it's, I know he said it's finished, but he knew that moment he was going to die, he knew that his soul was going to go into hell. But he knew he was going to get victory. And he knew the moment that he died, he knew the moment he come out of that grave, it's finished. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. Alexander the Great, this is the Great, Genghis Khan the Great. There's no greater than Jesus Christ. Check it out in history. How many people, human beings, have a name given to them the Great? A lot of magicians will call them the Great. And how many human beings also have to their name the title King? There's one Great, there's one King, Jesus Christ. He should divide, divide the spoil with the strong. What's the spoil? Gold, silver, precious stones, inheritance with those who stood, those that fought the good fight, those that kept the armor on, and those that stayed in the battle. But don't eliminate Samson because even in his death, he got victory over the Philistines. And his name is in, is in the, uh, the great faith chapter, Hebrews 11. Because he poured out his soul unto death. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to scriptures. And was buried and rose again the third day according to scriptures. He was numbered with the transgressors. A dying thief on the left and a dying thief on the right. He bared the sin of many. Though the Lamb of God takes away the sin of the world. Not everybody will put their sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. Some will put it in Mary. Some will put it in a cookie. Some will put it in the church. Some will put it in tithing. Some will put it under IRS form. Some will put it in water. Some will say, you know, not everybody will put it under the blood of Jesus Christ. And made intercession for the transgressors. And we have today, there's one mediator between God and man. Isaiah 53, 12. The man, Christ Jesus. And God sat up in heaven that, that Passover afternoon and said, give it to him more. And when Jesus, in Acts chapter 1, ascended in heaven and sat at the right, home, the right, right hand of the Father at the throne of the Son, yes, Father, satisfied. God didn't say, I'm proud of you. That's, that's a sin. When the son sat down at the father and said, Son, yes, father, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And when you do what the Bible tells what the Bible, not what your pastor tells you, what the Bible tells you to do, you'll get the same recognition that God gave to the son. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And you have the opportunity like Jesus in, in Revelation 19. You could be wearing many crowns. But don't get the don't get the foolish notion everybody's going to heaven. They're not. I learned that from all the ministries God's given me. All the churches I've been in, I'm sorry to say it, there are churches, there are people who profess to be a Christian. I don't have the right to judge, but judging by faith and works written in the book of James, I can say, you know what? I really don't think so. I really don't think so. Now, God, the devil, and that soul known. But woe be to that soul that's been deceived by another man to think that he's got something that when he really doesn't have it. I hate to be in that shoe.